Oh no. Resist, resist. Uh, or not. <laughs> well, hello guys. Now I'm home again. Yeah. Went on a little trip, shopping trip. Um, basically everywhere in the city. Uh, to get the specifically good orchid soil. I don't have any uh, pure bark left pieces of bark. So uh, this is what I'm left with a uh, ready mix bag for orchids. So um, but this particular well, this particular brand from this place uh, has got most number of good pieces of bark which aren't degrading. They are really, really sturdy still, and many in numbers, so not so much uh, dust and uh, soft medium to it. So uh, these bags were worth uh, chasing around, yeah. But look at this amaryllis, the common one, really common one. Um, that's still not so high, since I'm not, um, I haven't started to water it yet, so I didn't get all that high and they're not supposed to become high and flimsy so this is great this is perfect it's perfect height i think and it's not a miniature really great and a little bit of thai food chicken with red curry extra strong so i'm getting really hungry i've been outside for a couple of hours uh with my dog so um now my stomach is really really aching <laughs> Screaming after food. I got this lovely uh, dendrobium phalaenopsis at a discount. Yeah, they had orchid. Yeah, last month I think we had this orchid month where most uh, garden centers was are selling loads of orchids. Yeah, at a kind of a decent price, but uh, but the good prices uh, shows up after about one month. So the ones who didn't sell, they weren't able to sell. People didn't want it. So this one was left for me, as you saw in the little clip at the beginning of this video. So um, <laughs> I just wanted to have something in bloom, and especially this color. I like this bluish color, purplish, bluish. And let's see what else about it. And I also do need the soil for the orchid mix. Um, I'm about to rip a few, um, not a few. Several of my, <laughs> I was about to say fail nopsis. I mean, have your pendulums in there. Many of them haven't uh, been reported since I, yeah, ever since I got them. So they've been sitting in the same kind of medium. Um, yeah, many of them for quite some time and a little bit too long now. Since have your pendulums uh, seems to like to be reported at least once a year after they finish the flowering, the blooming. Um, what do we have in here? Um, yeah, this one is progressing. The weight, the weight, the dendrobium sulavensiense is progressing its buds now. As you can see, it's got the same um, lovely center, orange center, as the hibiscus got. So, um, like kind of similar, but um, this one's flowers are about five or six times the size of the hibiki so let's see if it's fragrant after a while I I would know um, yeah so that was a video I was about to make today uh, some kind of uh, perfume pedalum orchids care and reporting video but it's a little bit too early so I'm waiting for something nice to appear and the nice Thing is up here. I want it to open before I uh, indulge in that video. The Philippinensi Varacea Robellini. Yeah. Let us look at this one. Instead. Yeah. Me. Uh, <laughs> this time I didn't go for most number of pseudobulbs. I went for the one with the largest and fattest one yeah since there are still some room left to uh, grow some new ones 
and I don't have so much space left so um, yeah let's use my brain <laughs> I was about to say for once but that's not really true <laughs> like, look at it it's almost coming out of the spot and it's this coconut husk fiber yeah really fiber not chips it's fiber and it's sitting in this old coconut husk media so I believe a um, softy will be suitable for it yeah I will use a clay pot for it and yeah why yeah it's kind of tall it's gonna be and it will be shall be kind of uh, wobbly otherwise so I will need a heavy pot and yeah that one fulfills our needs here here's a lovely band yeah still blue gorgeous let's see what else well I think that this one will bloom about once or twice a year at least but anyways um, I was about to show you this one not the uh, band the uh, Dendrobium Helix times Dr. Utai is sitting in my only holy clay pot. I bet that will be the only one I will ever get if I'm not going to go abroad and get it some other region. Anyways, um, it's a kind, I mean, similar kinds of orchids, really. They can continuously bloom from the same spot for many times, several years in a row. Doesn't need to create another new cane to bloom. But still, this one did. But uh, still, I cannot see any sign of any flower spikes or such. But well, I believe it will have to mature a little bit more. But um, I'm happy that this one's uh, cane new cane turned out to be just as good size as this old one so yeah and this one is also sitting in coconut has fiber chips so uh it seems to be um kind of um common out there and i believe that this guy needed a friend up here next to it when the cattleya here is gone yeah i'm gonna give that away to the lottery yeah anyways that's where this is the spot where my new one fail enough stand is gonna set so yeah so they're gonna be kept in similar setups this dendrobium uh ba -ba -ba -ba, what's his name um yeah chrysotoxum it's not being warded all that severely right now i will keep it a little bit drier throughout the winter time and the same goes for these guys, but not so much, but a little bit drier than it normally prefers. And I think that with a little bit of better light, these guys will have a better chance of blooming. What else is there to see in my little area? Yeah, the hibiki, still out. Here you can see the similarity between this one and the Sulevensiensi. And they aren't even related. Yeah, I thought they were, but they weren't. <laughs> this one is growing on nicely, my little hibiki, I think. Actually, there are two plants, separate plants in here. And, well, they are putting out some new growth from the bottom. Just as I want them to do. That's preferred. I don't like it when they become a um, cakey machine. This one is really prone to do that and uh, to um, show that kind of behavior. So it's a good thing it still is putting out new growth from the bottom. I love that. Really great. What else do you have? Ah! Yeah, Nelly Isla still in bloom after two months' time, so not many left, but still a little blooming. Or reported together with the pink variety, the same genus. Um, but yeah, they're still doing great, both of them. Nothing bad going on. And the same goes for this Phalaenopsis wannabe 
uh, Leodoro, but it's not. It's really, really similar. Yeah, and it's branching in places here. That's great. And needs kind of a good amount of water, this one. It dries out uh, in, a, yeah, in a really fast rate, so uh, you need to water him. Uh, it's getting dry and dry inside here. Even though I, I really, really try to switch off the uh, heating elements. Um, for a while it worked, but now it's kind of hot inside here. Still. Let us see. Ah! I have a first spike on... I think it's a spike. Yeah, yeah, it's a little spike there. First time spiking on a kind of recent purchase from uh, Orchid Garden. Failing off this tying shin fly eagle. So this will be an interesting one. This one had about one year to flowering size, so um, it's kind of early, so I bet it likes it in here. Now we have reached the uh, period when not so much is in bloom. But that would rapidly change. Ah, oh, yeah. The uh, Phalaenopsis Joy Ferrotea Peloric is rewarding us with this spike. Kind of nice spike. And <laughs> it's kind of crowded here, yeah. <laughs> and yet another one here to the backside. I've never done that before. It always produces one spike. And when that spike is overbloomed, or almost overbloomed, it starts to create another one. So never simultaneously. So I think this is going to be a good blooming, a really good blooming. Let us see. La la la. Yeah, and I did show you the, uh, the spike on this Vanda Miniata. Looks really, really funny, I think. Actually, there are two spikes. Yes. All right, let's move into the kitchen again. Um, ah, come to think of it, cichlids from Malawi are still doing great. I added a few more, of course. Yeah, the marble cat. Uh, the mo <laughs> the orange blotched <clears throat> marmulet cat looking ones. And. A few others. Friary. Scanochromis friary. Orange blotched. Yeah. Two different kinds. Yeah, that differs a bit. Um, what else? Yeah. This one, Hongi. Male and a female. The one with the orange head and white body. Yeah. yeah I believe that's almost. Uh, no. <clears throat> Labrychromis fulliborni catali, the little male, there, you see him, little, yeah, somewhere, uh, kind of fast, um, yeah, here, here he is, uh, this guy will turn out to be the most beautiful fish you ever saw, so, but his females aren't that great, <laughs> look at her, <laughs> but anyways, that's the way it is in the animal world. Anyways, let's deal with him immediately. Otherwise, I believe it will take some time. I'm kind of busy at the moment. Christmas and all. Kind of lot at work. And, yeah. Some charcoal. So I don't want to make it far too big. The pot. Yeah. And. Grab it. And remove this ugly container. Yeah. Kind of dry ish. Yeah. Squeeze it a bit. I believe it will need to go down a bit, anyways. Um, yeah. No, there will be no charcoal. It needs to go as deep down as possible into this. Uh, little pot here and it's latest cane is gonna come out from somewhere here around here this area so let's give it some space and yeah it's standing on its own whoops so easy peasy reporting easiest ever 
Well, I'm rid of the um, thrips. That's good news. But what I do have instead is scale infestation. So, as I said, the sum of everything is kind of level. <laughs> but I did say that I'm welcoming the scale, so, well... Well, I'll have to pay the price for saying that. Stupid words. Yeah. So, um, we got a stake here, so we, we can reuse that one. Uh, see, nothing wrong with that one. It's a good stake. We'll keep this one upright. The result is kind of satisfactory. Well, here's the, um, as an example, of one plant that still got it. The scale, Artage, Fu, Shu, Glory, Happy Holiday. This one has always been a scale magnet. Some plants they favorize even more than others. But uh, especially this one, I last January, I really uh, did what I could for this one. Uh, I almost killed it. No, <laughs> no, not really, but I, I split it up in two or maybe even three separate divisions. I'm not sure yet. Um, I don't remember, but um, in order to uh, get rid of the scale, and it was even sitting in um, semi hydro, since I figured it would be easier to just get it out and to clean off yeah, the media and switch media, and so the scale wouldn't be in there in the media. So we get rid of it the whole lot, so to speak. But boy, was I wrong. Look at it. At the uh, the canes, lurking about just about everywhere. Doesn't matter what I do, and it's not. Look at it, and it's not really spreading. So, the scale are, for the moment, focusing on especially this plant, and here's the spot. So, uh, it's not uh, going over on this one, not the BC Benosa. And not on the Myrmicatavola Francis Fox. Yeah, usually they loved it, but there's nothing really here. So, um, yeah, they stayed away from this one at least. And that guy, the uh, Monte Eleganti, is also usually a favorite little scale to lurk about on. So, um... It's not really spreading, so I, I need to. But I'm, I'm scared, so as soon as I clean off Happy Holiday, they will jump over to other plants. So um, <laughs> why not just let them sit there? <laughs> no, no, no. You see my point? Um, and also I have two plants in my living room. Yeah, scale magnets. Yeah, they've always been scale magnets, so nothing strange about that. So, well, this is what's happening. I think that... um. There can only be one severe pest infestation at a time, I think. And then they switch. So, but overall it's a lot better. A lot, lot better. The thrip situation was really, really devastating. So, um, I'm kind of happy anyway. So, yeah, let me be here. <laughs> Well, I guess it's going to be a superb opportunity to uh, try this one out. See what it's made of. Yay. It smells kind of great. Like some kind of herb. I'm not sure what's in it. Maybe it says here. <laughs> Especially blended. Especially, no. Especially blended plant extracts. Yeah, 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 no revealing on the secret potion recipe. No, no, no. Well, let's see if it works. It smells great, at least. Well, um, this video turns out to be kind of strange. <laughs> Loads of different stuff, uh, <laughs> all squeezed in together in the same clip. <laughs> Anyways, what is this funny looking one? It's, um,. Catlea Daenerys. Ah, uh, Game of Thrones. Daenerys. Yay! Ah, uh, La Tulière 
it should be the variety La Tulière, but it doesn't say on the tag, but uh, it was announced as a La Tulière from La Orchidine de Michel Vachereau, French, I believe. Sitting in Semihydro, I had this orchid since it was kind of small. Um, a tiny little piece. Um, I need to uh, look it up in my folder, this old fashioned way of documenting things. Uh, since my hard drive uh, crashed and I lost about every note I ever had and every picture as well. So, well, not every, but I managed to save some of it with a certain program. Uh, but, anyways, um, <clears throat> that's why I'm doing it the old fashioned way. I'm not saying that I like it, but. Um, <laughs> but the fold is still here. And that's the difference. Let's see now. Ah, here it is, finally. I got it in the 13th of April, 17. God, it's almost six years ago. As a young plant for about 15 euro. Uh, nothing more to it. So I had it for almost six years so I bet that is really the time it takes for a huge size Cattleya to become flowering size. Uh, this one needed to create, uh, let's see, this size cane. Look, it's fat, fat and shiny pseudobulb with an empty blind sheath. The second one, I really did think that this one she created throughout the summer month with this huge uh, sheath. Now it's just smooshy and soft. Nothing in it. Isn't that strange? But this guy. Not half as uh, wide as the other one, the previous cane. This one finally decides to create stuff in here. Can you see it? Can you see the shadings? Yeah. There will be a couple of flowers in here. It looks a bit like... um, No, not a bit. A lot like uh, the Doviana. So, uh, man, am I happy? This is always a really, really special feeling when you grow an orchid from a seedling and you finally get to see its first flowering. Yeah, sitting in semi-hydro. Maybe um, the lower temperature the sudden uh, drop of temperature um, induced the uh, creation of the buds in there. I never had such a low uh, temperature inside this kitchen as I did two weeks ago, so. And that's when the buds appeared, so. Yeah, we shall see. A couple of Kitlea flowers before long. Really, really smashing, I hope. Looks a bit like Alma Key to Molly as well. So, something in between Doyana and Alma Key, I think. Okay, what do I have here? This one is still continuously creating buds, bud after bud. And even on the older spike, it arrived in bud. Looked about, yeah, almost like this when it arrived July 21. And it's been in bloom ever since. So, Mariposa 3 Lip. Psychopsis, yeah. Let's see if it's, um, newest, um, uh, growth will produce a spike as well. It didn't matter. This spike is, I mean, this growth is kind of weak. Still, it's in bloom, so... Yeah, good stuff going on in places. All right, guys, thank you for watching and take care and we shall talk soon. Bye-bye, guys.